Now on LWT, will it be love at first sight or the blind date from hell? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. Thank you, thank you. Hello, and welcome to Blind Date. Now, will it be love at first sight tonight? Let's find out, as we meet three lads looking for a girl. Here they are, George from Aberdeen, Roberto from Jersey, and Pat from Gateshead. Come in, the lads! Yeah. Well, well, I... <laughs> oh, hello, George! Hello. <laughs> Put your sweater on, George. <laughs> <laughs> now, George, you're not from Aberdeen, are you? No, I'm not, sir. I'm from Guildford in Surrey. Yes. And you've got <laughs> a very important job our George has got. What is it? Well, I work as a uh, financial analyst uh, for one of the old companies up in Aberdeen. Now, you're a very sporty fellow. Yes, I am. Yes, I love the outdoors. Well, you, we could tell the way you speak. Yes, well, You're I'm, a yachtsman, are you not? Yeah, I'm a very keen sailor, and uh, whilst I'd like to have a girl in every port, oh. I'd, I'd much rather well have one first uh, special mate. Yes, but who's your first special mate? Have you any ideas? Well, I think it'd have to be Demi Moore. Oh, great taste. Lovely. Well, we can't promise you anything of that tonight, but I do promise you a safe journey back to Aberdeen. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy Blind Day, George. Well, hello, Roberto. Oh, bon sir. <laughs> Now, you are a count, aren't you? That's right. A Venetian. <laughs> and you have a history. That's right. You have a history, and it goes yes. way, way back. Way, way back to, to the 5th century. Oh. Yes, the invasion of the Goths. We won't make this into a history lesson, but we'll just <laughs> emphasize on the delights. Oh, do. Oh, do, oh, do. <laughs> Jersey. Live in Jersey for six, seven months of the year, yeah. just to get a bit of sun, invest a bit of money. Yes, because we're talking money here, aren't we're we, We're talking Robert? money here. Because so. you're... <laughs> millions and millions of oh. lira. Oh, <laughs> which means zilch. Zilch. <laughs> means zilch. Absolutely. Now, what have you come as tonight? Because you look... Red, red riding. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yes, yes. One of Liberace's. You, no, sorry. Because oh, <laughs> you look like Liberace. Oh, uh, really? For those who are old enough to remember. Now, this is your Toastmasters right. outfit. Yes, I'm in the Guild of Professional Toastmasters, and that's what I do up here in the West End in London. But you have got a lot of little, little, little strings to your bow. I mean, you do have a little... Well, he does. He does. Do. You do have a mahogany 30s boat. This I man's do, got yes. money here. We're talking no, um, serious money. I, I here. enjoy classic toys. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't look at me when you said that. <laughs> I said classic. I know, I mean, I know. You back for Hento. that one, Roberto. <laughs> yeah. I'll slap more than your thigh before the night's out, Roberto. <laughs> you got, oh dear. Boats, Jaguars. Jaguars. An old Austin. Lovely and vintage. Car. Don't you dare say anything about old. <laughs> old Austin and a Stein, my favourite. This is of all your possessions, I would love the Steinway yeah. piano. One of my uh, greater toys. Uh, my parents always said to me once, Robert, when you reach grade six, on the piano forte. <laughs> <laughs> I was only three months. Roberto, <laughs> you know, I'm just. Are you on the right show here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you, you coming to the right? Place? Oh, Silla, come on. <laughs> uh, I 
will buy you a grand. Yes. Yeah. And you've got it. No, well, I bought my own because I didn't reach grade six. I shot up over grade eight and that was it. Oh, you do? Oh. <laughs> you are enjoying yourself. I've no need to say to you, enjoy yourself on blind date Thank because you. you will do. Oh, You'd enjoy right. anything. I mean, open a fridge, you'll be there a bit. <laughs> We've got enough time left for you, Pat. I, I sincerely hope we have. I don't know how to follow that, Stella. Yeah, you will. <laughs> the looks alone. Yeah. <laughs> now, Pat, love, you are from Devon, but yep. you are a Geordieite. You work in Geordie land up I there. I work in Geordie. I'm a born-again Geordie, sir. Actually, you do love Newcastle, don't oh, you? I love Newcastle, yes. You love the ale, you love the football, and you love the women. Uh, yeah, not necessarily in that order. Right. But yeah. <laughs> and quite a flirt, I believe. Well, um, I do like to flirt with uh, the ladies. Probably some of the, a couple too many of our customers in the bank, maybe. But you know. I mean, you serve the pretty ones first, don't you? Well, they all say I do. I don't know if it's true, really. To be honest, I think I'm just uh, very efficient and helpful, probably. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe after tonight you might become famous, and you will you speak to me. I know this one will in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> all three of you. You will enjoy blind date. Enjoy Absolutely. it. See you in a minute. Thanks, Thank Sarah. You. Well, now let's meet the girl one of those three lads will be dating. Her name's Jilly, and she's from Cheshire. Come in, Jilly. <laughs> yourself comfortable down there Thank you. and the only thing I've got to say to you Jilly is the best of luck <laughs> <laughs> now tell us a little bit about yourself because you are in promotions that's your job I am indeed I literally do anything anything new that comes on the market I sell it tights knickers tomatoes mushroom <laughs> coffee makers you name it and I do it now you have I mean you're a bit of a softy where it comes to men really because they bring you all their problems they do swines they do all the time. <laughs> So you're not you're not very lucky with boyfriends, no, really, no. are you? No, I always pick the ones that uh, want to walk over somebody or something like that. Oh, what a shame! Oh. So your ideal man would be—I know your idea—he's got to be rich. Yes, a lady. <laughs> You're looking for a, an Arnold Schwarzenegger look-alike. Yes, I like, I like big chips. <laughs> <laughs> In your dreams. <laughs> well, I can tell you, the lads over there, they're very rich in the rich department. <laughs> but one is extremely poor in the Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> And I'll leave that to make your own mind up about that because you've got three questions there to find out which one you're going to choose. So off you go, Jilly. Okay. The best of luck. Thank you. Good evening, chaps. Good evening, Jilly. <laughs> well, my first question is, most of my friends are air hostesses and when we go out they have a tendency to talk shop. To try and distract them, I usually talk about the price of potatoes. To your, if your friends were boring you, what would you say to change the conversation? That's to number one, please. Well, Jilly, perhaps it isn't the conversation you want to change, but your friends. But uh, <laughs> if we go out together, I can guarantee you we won't be talking King Edwards. We'll be getting our jackets <laughs> off and having a smashing time. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Uh, same question to number two, please. Well, um, <laughs> I say, um, well, I would slowly, t so tactfully, sort of move away to the piano, as the piano is my forte, and sing you, and sing you, <laughs> for the educated folk here, piano forte, <laughs> and sing you a lovely little song that goes something like, I'd like to get you on a slow boat to China. Oh, make it quicker yeah. than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, 
Oh, back, to, oh, back to my place for a cappuccino. Uh, excuse me, number two. I think I might just leave you with my actual girlfriends and you can all bore each other. <laughs> Please. Hello. Uh, well, I live in Newcastle, and all they talk about up there is football, so I'll probably have to steer them away from that and onto beautiful woman on which I am an expert. And I would like to actually continue my research this evening, so if you pick me, <laughs> if you pick me, maybe we could uh, test some of my theories. Second question. My brother owns a florist shop and I often helped him out making deliveries of flowers, etc. Because of uh, this, receiving flowers doesn't have the same effect on me as it does with other girls. So what unusual gift would you give me as a romantic gesture? That goes to number two, please. Well, G uh, Ginny, um, first of all, I'd uh, sort of whisk you off to Venice on the Orient Express. And we'll stay in that beautiful little hotel, world famous, called the Cipriani. He's not kidding. And then, <laughs> then yeah, I'd plenty, get... Of, plenty of chips in the Cipriano. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave you a speaking part over ah! there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> well, I ha somebody has to with oh, you no. around. <laughs> And before I was rudely interrupted, I would continue. <laughs> and then we'll go for a cruise or two up the Grand Canal in the gondola. And we'll end up in St Marco Square, sipping a few cocktails. And I would promise I would never be a menace in Venice to you. Wake up, Jilly, he's just <laughs> finished. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, number two, that's very nice. Uh, number one... <laughs> <laughs> well, Julie, I believe that uh, rather than the gift, I, I believe it's the delivery of the gift that's the most important. And uh, because I'm a very keen sailor and horseman, I deliver your gift uh, single-handed across treacherous seas, bare-backed uh, over scorching deserts, to hand to you an empty box of chocolates. <laughs> it's a long journey, and I'd probably feel a bit peckish. Number three, what do you have to offer, please? Right, it's interesting that your brother sells flowers. My brothers actually sell tractors, but I wouldn't give you one. <laughs> a, tractor, that is. a tractor, sorry. <laughs> settle down, settle down. <laughs> well, what I would say is that I've got a brand new combine harvester and I'll give you the key. <laughs> chance now to win me over. Third question. The craziest thing I ever did after a heated argument was to jump in a lake to cool off. What's the craziest thing you've ever done as a result of a row? Uh, and that's to number three first, please. Right, um, as I sing in a rock band, I, I've got an artistic temperament and I tend to get a little hot-headed. So, similar to yourself, I've actually, uh, in the middle of the night one night, uh, about three o'clock in the morning, had an argument, stripped off to nothing but a strategically placed sock, if you can use your imagination. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I run down my street in Gateshead singing, I've got the whole world in my hands. <laughs> but, should I be glad I'm not your neighbour? Or not? <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe you should come live with me instead, but I, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but next time you go and jump in a lake, maybe you could lend me one of your stockings. OK, number two, give it to me. I never really get into sort of outrageous arguments because I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, my dear darling, uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep yourself dry. Don't fall into any of those lakes. Come bouncing on my waterbed. <laughs> and why didn't you pick me? <laughs> why didn't you pick me? The rose between two thorns. Uh, <laughs> okay. Last question, now to number one, please. Well, Julie, I once had a wrestling match with a college friend. 
It was two o'clock in the morning, it was raining, and we were both in our underwear. Oh. I quite enjoyed it, and, uh, <laughs> and so did she. And if you fancy putting me in a half Nelson, <laughs> I'll gladly submit. <laughs> Jilly, that's an experience, isn't it? It is itself. indeed, indeed. And I know you're none the wiser, no. but actually, a little <laughs> twinkle in your eye. You've got an idea who you're going to go for, but don't make your mind up just yet, because there's our Graham with that quick reminder. Jilly, will you choose hot potato number one, who once wrestled with a girl in his underpants? <laughs> what I'd like to know is, how do they both fit in? <laughs> or maybe you prefer Everright number two. He wants to whisk you away to Venice. <laughs> If you're lucky, he might just give you a lick of his cornetto. If he hasn't already eaten it. <laughs> or how about streaker number three, who's given a whole new meaning to the phrase, put a sock in it. <laughs> the decision is yours. Yes, Jilly. Jilly, say this quick, because the audience is going to make up your mind for you. Say it dead quick. Don't look at them. Just say, off the top of your head, who are you going to go for? Two. <laughs> You turned down. How could you turn down Pat? Daisy, <laughs> number three from Gateshead. Come in, Pat. Never mind. Have you enjoyed it? Oh, I've had a great time. Great. Brilliant day. Good yeah. luck. Thank Good you. luck. What you need to do? A lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. <laughs> And down number one, that was the gorgeous George with the voice that you loved. Mm. Calm, didn't have time to put a sweater on, but here he is, all the way from Aberdeen. Come in, George. Here's our George. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give my love to all the girls in Aberdeen. I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you say? Your blind day for this evening, you chose number two. That was Roberto, Count Roberto from Jersey. Come in, Roberto. Walk this way. <laughs> well, Jilly. We're going to have a good time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm sure you will have a good time. Who's going to choose your date? Where are you going? No, Roberto has been lucky to pick me, so I will let him be lucky enough to pick oh. us a good date. Oh, oh yes. Balls in my court. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I wish it was. <laughs> yeah. Come on, pick a oh, card, Roberto. Oh, Roberto. Mm. There we go. Come on, what does it say? Are you going to read? Lady. No, 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 please. No, please. no, 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 no. You no, read no. it. You read it. <laughs> OK, if I can open it up, huh? It says... What does it say? A date on the Thames. Can we imagine my flat and we could wave for the butler? <laughs> yes. It couldn't have happened to a nicer man. <laughs> Like a 10-year passport to go up the Thames. <laughs> well, it's your own fault if you can't take a joke, yes. <laughs> Actually, Julie, honestly, really, this is the best part of the date. Right. <laughs> you have a, no, listen, whatever date you're on, we do make sure that you have a great time. Boating. And, yes, yes, you're off on a boating trip down the historic River Thames. <laughs> <laughs> do I really have to read this? <laughs> You'll take a helicopter. Suppose you've got one of them. Out. <laughs> Two, actually. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> thought so. <laughs> helicopter. Yes, yeah. gonna. Oh well, this is the best thing. Oh. You're going to take a helicopter flight. And you're going to meet the Olympic gold medal winners, the Searle brothers, who did so well for yeah. us here, here. in the Olympic Games. Yes. <laughs> and they're going to give you. I love this. They're going to give you a rowing lesson. Him with a yacht, and they're going to give you. <laughs> And, you know, I say this every week, but this is the only time I say it without really meaning it. <laughs> Will you come back next week and tell me? No. Yeah. Yeah, we will. All right, yeah. and you have a fabulous yeah. time. Not yet. Ladies, yeah. I'll just introduce you on the way off. Ladies and gentlemen, wish them well. I certainly do. Oh, oh. 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 Gillian! <laughs> Thank you See you next week. Bye, 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 bye,